Most of us living in the West have never known hunger. In America, food shelves are easily accessed by the most vulnerable of our society. Now, despite living in a time where there's a global surplus of food, millions of people around the world are still suffering from famine. And if you follow the mainstream media coverage about these humanitarian disasters, they're most likely presented through the lens of climate change, high food prices, and taxes. But in places like Yemen, South Sudan, and Somalia, where images of skeletal children have become commonplace in several countries across Africa and the Middle East, it is perhaps no coincidence that the epidemic of famine is directly linked to modern-day colonialism and imperialism, led, of course, by the United States and NATO. It is in this part of the world where resource exploitation, the war on terror, military occupation, and destabilization intersect to create one of the most dire humanitarian crises of the modern era. While environmental factors do play a role, Policies set by the world's most powerful oil companies and state actors have created and reinforced the present situation. In Somalia, for example, where the U.S. has been waging a covert drone war, people have become accustomed to famine. In a span of just one year, between 2011 and 2012, over 260,000 people died, half of them under the age of five, marking the worst famine in the last 25 years. Now, according to data from Somalia's Food Security and Nutrition Analysis Unit, 4.6% of the total population and 10% of children under 5 died in southern and central Somalia alone during this time period. Now, the organization also found that the result was widespread livestock deaths, the smallest cereal harvest since the 1991 to 1994 civil war, and a major drop in labor demand, which reduced household income altogether. Compounding environmental burdens were the wider impacts of British colonialism in Somalia, as well as U.S. militarism. While the U.S. plundered Somalia for resources by way of mineral excavation and so-called oil exploration by companies like ExxonMobil, past and present administrations have also applied their full military might. In 1993, during the Clinton presidency, for example, images of famine and war were used to convince Americans that the U.S. military efforts were necessary in Somalia. Bill Clinton famously said, we went to Somalia because only the United States could help stop one of the great human tragedies of this time. In a sense, we came to Somalia to rescue innocent people in a burning house. What Bill Clinton didn't disclose, though, was that the United States was one of the reasons why the house was on fire to begin with, and military efforts would not help to put out the flames. Now, in South Sudan, a small statelet less than a decade old and home to some of Africa's largest oil reserves, nearly two million people are on the brink of starvation today. South Sudan has found itself in a situation that the UN describes as catastrophic, predicting that half the population will be facing food shortages by the end of this year. Further exacerbating the situation is the mark left behind by the U.S. military, which has poured billions into the country by way of weaponry, plunging the nation into chaos in order to turn it into another colonial outpost. And according to a U.N. report published just last year, the civil war in South Sudan is being fueled by European and Israeli arms makers who are taking advantage of the bloodshed, where the arms trafficking network was selling thousands of weapons in the country by 2014, sinking the country into civil war. While war ravaged South Sudan, oil companies like Oranto to Petroleum and Exxon were busy exploiting resources, setting up oil and gas deals worth billions of dollars, while nearly half the population was starving. Mothers unable to feed their starving children, while the shadowy European corporation Swiss Finance Luxembourg AG just announcing an $11 billion deal that is said to rise to $105 billion. A nation carved out of a unified Sudan with help from the US, UK, France, Israel, and other NATO states, South Sudan plays an essential role in hosting economic arrangements to the benefit of strategic US empire interests in the region, with its large reserves of gold, construction materials, and crude petroleum. While creating a state of affairs that reinforces hunger, the US and its allies are finding new ways to exploit the most vulnerable and keep them divided through means of war and weapons imports. Now, Yemen is also being forced to endure the chilling effects of famine, thanks to a U.S.-backed bombing campaign by Saudi Arabia and a well-armed coalition supported by both the Obama and Trump administrations. After years of indiscriminate bombing campaigns and port blockades, millions of starving Yemenis are now also dealing with cholera, while the number of cases are set to hit 150,000 in the next six months due to a lack of medicine, a preventable epidemic that is the largest case seen in modern history. Already one of the poorest countries in the Arab world, Yemen is now facing near-total collapse. 
Now, Saudi Arabia, the largest arms buyer of the United States that sits on a key humanitarian panel at the UN, is blocking imports of food, medicine, and fuel from reaching Yemen. This has given the people of Yemen a total death sentence, weaponizing humanitarian aid so the U.S. can rattle its saber at Iran and ensure Saudi Arabia's hegemony over Yemen's vast oil and mineral reserves. Now, humanitarian aid will mean little without the end of war, especially if that aid is tied to militarization and resource exploitation. Now, the truth is, though, aid comes with a lot of strings attached. The U.S. and its allies don't seem to be delivering aid for the sake of altruism, but with the direct or indirect guarantees that they will be able to build or deepen relationships with recipients for their own proxy benefits. Now, the U.S. has long used disaster relief efforts as a way to advance its military presence and undermine entire countries, like in the use of USAID. IMF loans and World Bank assistance that actually plunge third world countries into more debt that exacerbate economic divisions between the 1% of that society and everyone else. Now, the face of modern colonialism takes on many shapes. Throughout history, empires grow by tightening their grip on the land and the people in order to fill their own pockets while the general population struggle to feed their families. This downward spiral of famine and war will not end until the people of Somalia, Yemen, and South Sudan unite and rise above the divide and conquer strategies of the corporate masters that rule over them.